So, I will talk about asbestos. So we are going back to uh, the basics. Um, and on the pictures here, you used to see uh, the three most commonly used asbestos types. Uh, amosite, crocidolite and chrysotile. Uh, asbestos fibers uh, are uh, fibrous um, silicate mineral, uh, natural occurring, and it has been used extensively in the construction industry. Uh, but it has been banned in most countries, in many countries, for uh, soon 40 years um, because of the adverse health effects that you can get when you are inhaling these fibers. Um, but still, uh, because of this uh, extensive use, uh, there are still many buildings around that contains asbestos-containing materials. And these houses, they are not getting old. Uh, they were built maybe in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. They, it's time for them to be renovated or uh, to be uh, that you remove uh, the asbestos materials. Especially if you don't know that you have these asbestos-containing materials, there are a, a risk that uh, workers may be exposed during renovation or uh, just doing some modifications on a building, uh, drilling a hole, uh, those types of uh, work. The Norwegian occupational exposure limit is now 0.1 fiber per cubic uh, centimeter, as in many other uh, European countries but it's now being debated if this uh, limit will be lowered. And you can see that the fibers are quantified by counting. So you are actually counting each uh, fiber. Um, and uh, so this is, <laughs> this is very manual work. It's not yet uh, AI. Uh, um, yeah, and it's time consuming. There are different techniques, microscopic techniques for counting. And uh, I will go into the, the three uh, methods. Uh, but inside these tex techniques, you also have uh, different methods or, or standards that you can use when you are counting. So the most uh, used, at least historically, is the PCM method, the phase uh, contrast uh, microscope. Uh, you can see here uh, a counting field, uh, and you are counting asbestos according to some rules. And then you have to co cover a certain area of the, of the filter. The limitations here are that you are not able to detect uh, fibers thinner than 0 0.2 micrometers because you are uh, limited by the wavelength of the light. And you have no chemical information, so you are not counting asbestos fibers, you are counting fibers. And this is the fiber uh, definition uh, that is used. Uh, when you're using a scanning electron microscope, uh, you can get, in addition to morphology, also chemical information. So you can not only say that it is asbestos, but you can classify the asbestos uh, type. Um, this is also the fiber de definition that is used uh, here. Um, but you can see the thinner fibers as well. Um, at least uh, many of those, the thin fibers. And but the, the methods that you have today, they don't. Uh, they, s they specify that you should count the PCM equivalent uh, fibers and then list the thin fibers separately. Uh, the transmission electron microscope, uh, you also get morphology and chemistry, and you can also get the crystalline structure. You have indirect and direct methods here. Uh, in the indirect, you are uh, dispersing uh, the material on the filter and then you can di uh, dilute the sample if you have a lot of uh, particles on the filter. That may be necessary because uh, it's very you cannot count a filter if you have a lot of deposited uh, particles. Uh, some uh, methods here specify uh, or uh, have this fiber definition, which is as you can see, much shorter fibers than the ones that you are counting in SAM and PCM. But also the methods here uh, often specify that you should count like a PCM equivalent uh, fibers so that you are able to compare. So in this project, we have uh, measured asbestos concentrations in the air uh, during asbestos abatement. So when taking these uh, uh, asbestos containing materials down. 
We have looked at different materials. Uh, the blue ones here are indoor materials, and then asbestos cement materials are, were collected out uh, for outside. Uh, this resulted in 46 samples, uh, which is not a high number, but it was <laughs> quite challenging to get these samples, actually. Um, and we also had uh, more samples that were uh, rejected because they had a high uh, loading on the filter and uh, it was not possible to count them. Um, we collected parallel samples uh, for PCM and SEM, uh, resulted in 27 uh, samples. We also had some uh, samples for TEM, but these were uh, not uh, suitable for the direct uh, TEM methods uh, which were used in this uh, method because they had uh, a lot of other particles uh, on them. Um, so the two methods that were used was the ISO method for SEM and the PCM um, uh, method was NIOSH 7400 and this was the, the PCM count was done as at the commercial laboratory. Uh, these results are now published uh, in the Annals of Work Exposure and Health, so you can read more about the samples there. So, going to the results, um, we uh, measured removing asbestos insulating boards, uh, which is a material used uh, for wall and roof uh, plates. It's a quite friable material and the concentrations that we got were uh, quite high here, uh, 1.5 to 4.5 fibers per cubic centimeters um, and also by cleaning um, but this is only one sample and this is uh, five samples so it's it's uh, not that uh, many samples here but we found that the amosite fibers dominated here but we also have chrysotile fibers when looking at the comparison between SEM and PCM we see that there is a good correlation between uh, SEM and the, the PCM measurements also when including the thin fibers in the SEM count uh, and they are not so far from the ideal one-to-one -one, uh, relationship. Uh, and this is because, uh, one thing, there were no, not many other fibers in this material. It was mainly uh, the asbestos fibers, so not other fibers as well. And the thin fibers did not uh, account for that much of the total uh, fibers. Um, these emosat fibers it's not that easily split into these uh, thinner fibers as, for instance, chrysotile. <coughs> for the floor materials, uh, all the uh, asbestos uh, SEM uh, counts in SEM was um, below detection limit, um, six samples here. And uh, what we found on the samples were calcium sulfite um, fibers or gypsum fibers. Um, and this was the only fiber type that we found here. Um, the PCM uh, uh, measurements were between 0 0.4 and 2.1 fibers per cubic centimeters. Uh, when looking at the cross section of a, such a vinyl um, floor tile, we see that we have uh, asbestos fibers inside the material, but they are not so friable here as in the insulating uh, boards, they are more uh, fixed into the matrix. On the floor surface, we also see that we have a lot of particles lying on the surface, which when you are uh, removing them, these are uh, then uh, redispersed into the air, and this was actually the these fibers that we were counted, and the PCM probably counted the, the calcium sulfide fibers as uh, asbestos fibers. So the outdoor material, uh, here we had the most uh, samples um, and they were from below the detection limit up to 0 0.4 fibers per cubic uh, centimeters for the SEM count. Uh, in these samples, uh, chrysotile fibers dominated, uh, but we also found the other types here, amosite and chrysotile. Um, we had both roof and uh, wall plates, and I should mention here that we also had some samples that were collected inside of a tent, so the, the, um, the concentration uh, may have been higher in that case. Looking at the uh, comparison between SEM and PCM, we see that there is not, uh, or the correlation is not that good as for the insulating boards. Um, 
in this case, uh, or for the outdoor materials, we see that we have uh, quite often other types of fibers present, both inorganic and organic fibers, uh, also coming from natural uh, sources. Um, and we think that the PCM method probably counted um, uh, these inorganic and organic fibers, uh, which means that they, they had a higher uh, concentration. Uh, when adding the thin fibers, uh, we are closer to the one-to-one -one, uh, uh, relationship. Um, but probably these, the amount of other fibers uh, counteracted the, the thin fibers. And the, the thin fibers actually uh, was almost 50% in some of these samples. So in the end, I will just talk shortly about, uh, we also looked at short-term work where we did sewing or drilling on uh, asbestos materials. Because this is also the case that you have, you have a plumber or electri electrician coming inside doing some short uh, uh, modifications and... <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it's a movie. Yeah, you see this cloud of dust uh, coming. And we measure this both on filters, but we had also a, um, a real-time monitor measuring the concentrations, a TSI fiber monitor. And it was calibrated for chrysotile. And you see the, the, the levels here uh, can be quite high when doing these very short-term uh, measurements. So this is a drilling roof, uh, drilling wall. This is another type of roof, yeah. And uh, I think this is very important to, to remember that if you don't know that you have asbestos containing material uh, in a house, um, this is might happen that you come in and you do some short term work. Um, so and to sum up, uh, it's important to map the presence of asbestos containing materials in order to protect the workers. We see that the occurrence of other types of common fibers, for instance, like the cal calcium sulfide fibers, may lead to error counts using the PCM method. And a high proportion of thin fibers were found in the asbestos cement material. And this is probably true for many of the materials that are dominated by chrysotile. So, thank you. <laughs>